Hello, I am Siddhartha Vadapati, and I just graduated from Montgomery High School, New Jersey, and I'll be a rising freshman in Georgia Tech this fall. i m majoring in computer science. And in the meantime, summer physics experiments! This video will be a continuation of my last video where I discussed the EMF meter, a device that helps with deriving the laws of electromagnetism by quantitatively measuring induced voltage from a magnet in a coil and then publishing that data to the nearest millivolt to a browser where entire classrooms can see the data. Now, before we continue any further, I'll let you go to the description where I have a link to the previous video. I can wait. It's a great video. What are you doing? Watch it. Watch it. This video will focus less on the experiments themselves and more on the advancements I've made since the last video and how to use it in a classroom setting. So that will include how to set up these experimental setups and also how to use the equipment to measure the voltage and perform any of the experiments that I've done in the previous video. This is the advanced EMF meter. Unlike its predecessor, which could only publish its data to the browser, like on Node-RED, which you've seen before, it can also publish the data on a personalized TFT screen, as seen here, where it can publish the same data on a nice time versus voltage graph. Making this simplification was not an easy task. I had to first learn several new techniques regarding soldering and also eagle design, and I had to leverage the new Adafruit feather form factor, so that way it would be more user-friendly for assembly. Now, let's take a look under the hood so to speak, and see what actually makes the EMF meter advanced more advanced. The first thing you're going to see when you open up the EMF meter is a PCB that looks somewhat like this. This is a feather wing that I custom made to be a board for the ADS-1115, which was originally a breakout board produced by Adafruit Industries. This feather wing is designed so that way you can directly plug it into any other feather or feather wing like the 32U4 or the ESP8266 Huzzah so that way you can stack these up into gradually more complex circuits without having to worry about the direct connections themselves. Unlike the previous EMF meter which could only connect to one coil, this PCB allows you to connect to two separate coils with each prong having two terminals which you would hook each terminal of the coil up to, as seen here and also seen here. The wireless communication you see happening between the EMF meter and the computer is enabled through two different devices. The first is the Adafruit Feather Huzzah, which is what you'll see when you peel off the ADS-1115 feather wing as seen here. The second is the Raspberry Pi 3, which acts as a host. The Feather Huzzah sends data to the Raspberry Pi and then the Raspberry Pi communicates this data to a single Wi-Fi through which any device hooked up to said Wi-Fi can then see the data graphed as seen on this computer. This means if you have a phone hooked up on the same Wi-Fi, you can access it and see it mobilely as well. Once you peel off the Adafruit Feather Huzzah, you'll get the back of the TFT Feather Wing, which is the main device that we use to display the voltage versus time graph. Not only did we advance the EMF meter itself, we also advance the turntable setup that we use so frequently in our experiments. For instance, now, instead of there being a separate joystick contraption away from the main microcontroller, we're using a TFT joystick feather wing, as seen here, to control the entire turntable setup. So for instance, if I push the joystick down like this, I increase the speed, and the motor increases at a proportional rate. And when I pull up, down, like this, it decreases the speed. And I can also alter the direction by pressing side to side. So in this case, it switches direction, and when I push it back this way, it switches back to its original direction. And if I press downward like this on the button, it automatically stops. and it maintains its speed no matter whether or not you're holding onto the joystick, unlike the previous model. For those who've seen my circuitometer video, you might be wondering, is this compatible with the circuitometer platform? And the answer is absolutely yes. Like the circuitometer platform, it too can measure the RPS that the disc is rotating at, and you can use it for similar experiments in rotational kinematics. 
With the EMF meter, we can perform a variety of different experiments with electromagnetism. For instance, we can test Lorenz's law and show that by manipulating the speed, for instance increasing it by a factor of 2, will cause the peak voltages to increase by a proportional factor, in this case a factor of 2. We could also demonstrate that with Biosavar's law and Lorenz's law working together in this setup, that the voltage will be proportional to 1 over r squared. So in this case, when we double the radius from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters, we're going to get approximately one-fourth of the original peak voltages that we saw before. Since our last video on the EMF meter, we've made new experiments for the advanced EMF meter, like testing how Lorenz's law states that the voltage is only dependent on the length of the wire itself and not the area that the cross-section of the coil takes up. For instance, this setup currently has a coil with a wire's length of 250 feet and gauge 22. And looking at the peak-to-peak -peak voltages, we have approximately plus or minus 110 millivolts. Now, let's see what happens when we take a wire of identical length and gauge and has twice the diameter and see whether or not that affects the voltage in any significant way. Now, we've taken the coil with a larger diameter but same length of wire and we're now measuring the peak-to-peak -peak voltages. As you can see, the peak-to-peak -peak voltages are approximately 120 millivolts, whereas the old measurement was approximately 110, showing that there's very little difference between the coils with different areas and that the length is what matters. Now what we'll do is we'll take a coil of the same diameter as this one, but we're going to double the length, where this coil has about 500 feet. Now what we've done is place the 500 foot wire coil at the same distance from the rotating magnet as the previous 250 foot wire coil. And when we look at the peak to peak voltages, what we get are plus and minus 250 millivolts, which is almost exactly double the peak voltages that we've got from the previous coil. Meaning that by doubling the length, we have nearly doubled the peak to peak voltages, showing that Lorenz's law is truly dependent on the wire length and is independent on the shape and size of the cross-sectional area. With the EMF meter and the rest of this equipment, your only limit is the imagination you have on the kinds of experiments you can do. And my goal is to distribute this equipment to the rest of the schools in New Jersey to disrupt physics education regarding electromagnetism. So far, my high school has adopted this equipment into the curriculum and will be using it starting this winter in Montgomery High School. I hope to continue distributing this equipment to schools that require equipment at a low budget and also would like to perform more hands-on experiments. Soon, I'll be selling this online, and if you are interested in purchasing or would like to know when these will be available for purchase, please email me in the email attached below. For more information on the EMF meter and the rest of this equipment, please visit my Instructables page in the links below as well for assembly and where to get the code and hardware. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.